I'm Mac Cheese, the host of the Genovision, and it's time to review the latest flavor of the month, which has been topping the Steam charts as of late. Now, as usual with early access games, we want to make it clear that in spite of its current state, we're not pulling any punches here. If it's ready to be released, it's ready to be reviewed. With that out of the way, Pal World. As you probably already know, it's kind of a parody of Pokemon with an Ark Survival Breath of the Wild vibe to it. You wake up on this mysterious new land called Palpagos Island with nothing but a tablet which ominously states the towers are the key. We then walk away with a rather fruity swagger. From there, you're just kind of left to do whatever. On this mysterious island you find yourself on are these cartoony, whimsical creatures the game calls Pals, who come in all shapes and sizes and possesses super supernatural abilities. These pals can be captured with these objects called spheres, at which point they'll be completely subservient to your every whim, their unique powers and abilities placed at your fingertip. I mean, you've played Pokemon before, it's basically the same thing. Capturing pals is the primary method of gaining experience points in this game, both for yourself and the pals. Leveling up means both the players and your pals improve their stats, improving combat among other things, but it also earns the player technology points, used to unlock various things on the tech tree. These range from furniture that is purely cosmetic to armor and weapons, and the workbenches that are needed to craft such things. The further you go down the tech tree, the better the upgrades get. This more or less culminates in the base building aspect of the game, where the player can settle anywhere within the game's world and develop their site. All the resources you gather, like wood, stone, and ore, are brought back here to build, craft, cook, and farm, all with the help of your pals, of course. When you've upgraded and resupplied, it's back to exploration, except now you're a bit more powerful. You can take on higher level pals, meaning you could get more XP meaning you can level up and go further down the tech tree, meaning you can go back to your base to craft more powerful gear, meaning you can explore. Yeah, it's a bit of a cycle you've got going on here. All this comes down to one final goal. The towers are the key after all. Indeed, there are five of them littered throughout the map, each of them controlled by a hostile enemy faction that the player must overcome. There's a criminal syndicate, a fire cult, a corrupt police force, an evil research team, and an animal rights organization that's basically an amalgamation of PETA and the Branch Davidians. Their respective faction leaders ruthlessly defend these towers and you gotta beat them. So now that you have a general idea of what this game's all about, it's dinner time. Let's dig in. The combat in this game is pretty uninteresting. Like Pokemon, pals have types like water, fire, grass, so on, which are strong and weak against other types. Otherwise, there's really nothing to note about them. Arguably the most optimal way to go about combat is to basically let your pals do their own thing, essentially making them nothing more than an autonomous object that can dish out a bit of extra damage every now and then. The players themselves are offered a wide variety of weapons, from primitive clubs and bows to full-on gunnery. But aside from how much damage you deal and how fast you can deal it, there's no real change to it all. You just pump as much damage into the enemy until you win, with maybe the occasional dodge or duck behind cover. Even the boss fights are incredibly unsatisfying, as they just kind of soak up damage. The strategy in action feels very limited, and it's not really engaging. Exploration is a bit of a mixed bag. On one hand, the world is quite sizable, with varying biomes and landmarks to discover. You've got rolling plains, snowy mountains, searing volcanoes, and barren deserts. You've even got landmarks, ruins from a potential precursor civilization that look pretty interesting. It's pretty fun to poke around, but there's a really big issue here. There is a difference between a good open world and an overglorified sandbox. An open world would ideally have world building, interesting characters to interact with, a general feeling of things happening in and around the landscape. Pal World, for the most part, has none of these. The world is completely dead and lifeless. There exist NPCs, but aside from merchants, they don't do anything. There exist enemy factions, but there's nothing to them other than a vague ideology or motivation. There are landmarks, but with no significance, they may as well not even exist. Even the pals are just kind of there, doing nothing other than wandering around the map. The only thing the game has in terms of lore are these journal entries, they don't do a lot to open up the world to the player. It's just a very indirect and boring way to convey this information. We don't want to read about what's going on, we want to take part in it. And honestly, they're not very well written. Overall, there's nothing that anchors you to this world, so it ends up being entirely forgettable. And while I'm nitpicking the world building of a game that barely even has it, the game starts itself off by telling you, ooh, the pals are brutal, they kill everything in sight, you gotta be tough to survive here. But according to what little lore the game has, you have these supposed organizations and gangs and factions vying for control over the island. And, and you know, I feel like if people have the resources and manpower to project and contest influence to impose their ideology, we're well past the point of just trying to survive. 
the base building is where it just gets brutal. First of all, while the game is, in its entirety, pretty unpolished, it's most obvious in the base building. You can't snap objects to walls, you can't snap rotate, you can't properly manipulate item placement, so you have to physically move your character in order to get something just where you want it. And if you decide you want to rearrange some things, you can't simply move an item. You have to entirely destroy it and then replace it elsewhere. This is especially annoying for items that you store things in, like chests. Because when you destroy one with items in it, they all just plop onto the ground. Base building brings about crafting. And you know, it starts off good. It's as simple as gathering raw resources from the overworld and bringing them back to base. Quick, simple, and straightforward. But things get a little more tedious in the late game. The recipes call for a more dynamic diverse roster of ingredients. You have to go all over the map to source them, bring them back to base, and you've got to refine them. Then you've got to turn those refined materials into even more refined materials to get the ingredients to craft the thing you want. It's like drop-down crafting. In order to craft this, you have to craft this, but in order to craft that, you have to refine this in a furnace or something, but in order to do that, you have to first get this resource that's only obtainable from this isolated section of the map. And when you finally have everything, you need the right workbench to craft it on. If you're confused right now, I don't blame you. All you have to know is, it's a mumble jumble of a bunch of tedious processes, and it's a total slog. It's made even worse by the crafting timers. Oh yeah, it's not enough that you have the materials ready and waiting to be used, you have to hold down a button and wait for the thing to craft, which can take minutes. The game does try to alleviate this, you can have pals working your base and they kind of automate the crafting process, but there's still a lot of involvement on the part of the player, especially in terms of resource gathering. And it really wouldn't be that bad because, alright, maybe the fancy stuff like guns, armor, and higher end workbenches should take a longer time to procure. Maybe you should have to work for that kind of stuff. That's Fair. The problem is when it affects things like consumables, like higher-end spheres and ammunition. Since you're gonna need to constantly resupply yourself with these items, you'd want them to be easier to produce, but that's just not the case. Consumable items like spheres and ammunition still take a significant amount of time to procure. So what ends up happening is a lot of time spent restocking and resupplying. The player forced to spend more time preparing to explore than actually exploring. That being said, as much crap as worth throwing at the game, we've gotta admit that the grind is quite Quite addicting. I mean, we've got about 40 hours in this game, and it's entirely possible that we'll sink in some more. Again, the game is a bit of a cycle, and the thing with that cycle is that it always gives you something to work towards, be that the next level, the next tech tree unlock, the next thing to build or craft back at base, the next resource to gather and refine. The player really gets caught up in this mad dash of progress, even if there's really nothing to progress to in the grand scheme of things. They'll be willing to brute force their way through whatever slog the game throws at them because they know what to do, they know how to do it, so they just just kind of stick around. It sounds dumb, but the game does a really good job of jiggling those keys, and the player will, for whatever reason, just keep on with it. It really is as simple as number up brain happy. It's weird, there is nothing to this game when you really break it down, but by having this feedback loop, it manages to keep the player hooked. That's why we'd say that it's addicting, but not necessarily fun. You won't be elated, but you might be enticed to stick around nevertheless. As far as smaller problems go, in order to, I suppose, delete pals from your collection, you have to butcher them, at which point this animation plays. <laughs> Which is pretty shocking and funny at first, but you'll have to sit through this every time you want to dismiss a pal. And you'll have to do it a lot because the game encourages you with bonus XP if you catch the same pal more than once. And you'll have to clear out the clutter at some point in time. So yeah, get ready to sit through this for a while. The game is also very unpolished. Character customization has less options than the Mii Maker, the muscle definition looks off, the anime aesthetic that the characters seem to have clashes with the more realistic world around it. When you wake up after sleeping, your character stands up on the bed. Some of the animations look like they're ripped straight out of Fortnite. There are glitches that cause you to fall through the ground. You'll see pals in environments that don't seem to suit them. Some pals are blatantly reskinned throughout the map. When loading into your base, your pals all spawn in the same spot. You get a assign tasks to pals in your base by throwing them at the object you want them to work on, except it doesn't work 99% of the time because you have to be so specific with it. Pals will phase through walls and get stuck on roofs. At some point in the game, the build prompt does not stop flashing, which is really annoying. I could go on, but you get the point. It's very clearly not a finished product. Oh no, I get it, early access, yada yada. But you could, at the very least, fix the obvious and glaring issues with your game. There are little things that we like. On the statistics, 
statistical side of things, pals are actually pretty in depth, with specific skills and personalities worth paying attention to in order to get the most out of them. There are certain things that the player can't do, like smelt ore, so they'll need to get a fire pal to melt it down, which is pretty cool. There's even negative effects for working them too hard or not giving them proper conditions. We also like the craftables available for some of them, allowing for more in-depth interaction. You can craft submachine guns for your little critters or saddles, not only allowing you to ride your pals to get around the map faster, but also letting you LARP as a Napoleonic Dragoon as you fire off muskets on horseback. Hell, while most of the PAL designs aren't anything to write home about, there are a handful that caught our eye. Like these bumblebee knights that kamikaze you when you try to fight them. You can also customize the difficulty for your world, and there is a long, long list of things to tinker with. Things like the length of the day and night cycles, experience gain, and resource distribution can be adjusted for a more personalized experience, which is always appreciated. I suppose it's worth mentioning that the game does have multiplayer, it's co-op only for the time being. Much like the rest of the game, it's not much of anything. We played with the boys over at Kill the Sabbath for a couple of hours, and everyone just kind of did their own thing. There really wasn't any cooperation going on, we were just kind of playing the game as usual, and there just so happen to be other people. Once again, I do of course disavow the segregationist ideas of <laughs> George C. Wallace. So I'll say it's nothing to write home about, but I guess it's better for the game to have this multiplayer mode than to not. Pal World is an admittedly interesting and addicting product, but it kind of falls apart when you realize that the progression holding the entire thing up is more or less arbitrary. There's no story to get invested in, combat and exploration is bland, and every aspect of base building and crafting seems designed from the ground up to artificially lengthen the experience. When you get down to it, there's just not a lot here, and it's a pretty forgettable experience overall. I give Pal World a 5.5 out of 10. Overall, mixed opinions on it, although leaning towards the positive side. I mean, there is somewhat of a foundation here, and there are a few things here and there about the game that nudge us into favorable territory, so that's worth mentioning. As far as recommendations go, like we said, the progression system does make the game quite addicting. If you're into that feeling of always having something to work towards, that feeling of progression, then honestly, I'd say get a job. If you're into that whole number go up gameplay, I mean, Pal World does it. I'm sure there's games out there that do it better, but Pal World does it. And honestly, it's a pretty good nothing game. Something that doesn't require much brain power to play. So it's perfect if you're the type of person who enjoys watching YouTube videos while gaming. It's easy to play while still being able to enjoy some maximum quality content. In general though, we certainly wouldn't be in a rush to buy the game. We'd say it's worth waiting to see if it ends up as a product worthy of your time and money. It has a long way to go before it can call itself a finished quality product. And it's up to the developers to get their act together if they want to make something of it. In any case, Pal World is a game worth keeping an eye on. And who knows, we might end up updating this review down the line. Here's to that, baby. That's our review on Pal World. Now, if you're new here, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. You've just watched a video from the Genovision. If you want to keep up to date with our game and movie reviews, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, and join the Discord. Mac Cheese to Genovision, signing out. You all have a good night. We will